How could the hippocampus actually store memories? Well, there are several models and several aspects in answer to that question. But one of the most intriguing is the idea of a what we call an autoencoder. Let me explain a bit how that works. And this is very theoretical, and this is drawn largely from machine learning, but could actually work with real neurons as well. We don't we don't really know. Okay, so let's start off with a simple neuron and we've got a cell body. We've got an we'll just have the dendritic field tree looking very simple, just like that. And then we have an output. Okay, so clearly if I have let's have an input here. Now with these with this neuron, we, go, we know that neurons can fire all different rates and so on. But with this neuron, we're not going to do that. It's just going to be either on or off. OK, so no worrying about the fine details of neurons here. This is just about as simple as we could possibly get a neuron looking. So it's either on or it's off, one or zero. Right, so now what I'm going to do, so this is the this is the output. Now clearly, if I have an input here of one, the output is going to be one. Uh, there's no there's no memory taking place there so far. It's just simply a relay circuit. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add some more neurons. And my job is to create an auto association. So, for example, um, I might have, you know, cheese. I want that to associate that with mouse. OK, so I have a think about cheese. And that makes me think of mice. And that, that's what I'm aiming at. So I'm going to put add now a few more neurons. I think what I'll do is I'll make them a slightly different colour. That'll help, I think. I've got a red one and a blue one. And a green one. So the idea is that once I'm given some sort of picture so I'm just given the cheese. I want then to be able to associate that with mouse. All right, so let's get rid of these bits for a minute. You know what the input and output is. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take each output and I'm going to send it back so that it excites itself and excites that one. So that's a synapse. That's an excitatory synapse. And that's an excitatory synapse. I'm going to do the same for each of the others now. So each neuron excites the others. You get the idea. If you don't understand the neuroscience, at least we get a pretty picture out of it. Now, the next thing to note, yeah, so these are all excitatory synapses. And they are Hebbian. Now, what I mean by that is neurons that fire together 
wire together. Right, so with a Hebbian synapse, if I've got a neuron here and I've got a synaptic input coming down here, if A is firing a lot and B is firing a lot, this synapse gets strengthened. Right, so the more these two fire together, the stronger this synapse gets. Right, you get more neurotransmitter released, or you get more receptors, don't don't doesn't matter how. So neurons that fire together, wire together. That's called the Hebbian rule. Now, we've actually now got enough to form a memory. So let's say I want to associate firing in this one and this one and this one. Right, so this is a bit like cheese. This is mouse. And this might be um, a trap. Okay. So I want to associate these three things together. So when I pick up a couple of these cues, it'll automatically remind me of the of the other one. All right. So let's just because this comes from engineering and computer science mostly, let's replace these with simply one, zero, one, one. Okay, so let's start training. What we do is when we're training, all these are active. So Black is active, red is not, blue is active, and green is active. So which synapses are going to be strengthened? Well, it's going to be this one. If we start with the black ones, this one, and this one's going to be strengthened. The red ones aren't going to be strengthened because they're not firing at all. Go to the blue ones, then this one's going to be strengthened, and this one's going to be strengthened. Let's just de strengthen these red ones. Because they're not, they're not being strengthened. And so the ones that are going to be strengthened are this one, this one, this one. Now let's look at the red ones, none of those, they're the blue ones. This one's going to be strengthened, this one's going to be strengthened, and this one's going to be strengthened. And if we do the green ones, this one's going to be strengthened, this one's going to be strengthened, and that one's going to be strengthened. So I've trained it now, and by the Hebbian rule, I've strengthened the ones that fire together. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to present it with just those two stimuli. What's going to happen? Well, first of all, we're going to have a signal coming down here and a signal coming down here, so we've got these two active. And we want this one to be active and that one not to be. So what's going to happen? The signal will come down here. It will feed back up along here. This has got a strong synapse, so we get activation with this one. The red one gets no inputs. But as this, this black one then will also activate that one and that one. Similarly, the red one is not being active, so it's not activating anything. And it's got no excitatory inputs, so that becomes zero. And again, with the blue one, blue one's not active, so it's not actually going to strengthen the other two. But the green one is. And what will the green one activate? It will activate this one this one and itself. 
So now we simply read these off. We've got two inputs there, 0, 2, 2. These are all above threshold. So I've got 1, 0, 1, 1. So what I've done is I've now, from this input here, I've actually recovered this output. So in other words, I said cheese and I said rat, uh, trap and that made your system also think of mouse because that one's come out.